A lot of people, including myself, have been impatiently waiting for custom firmware to be released for the Ambernic RG35XX Plus and H models. I know there have been some recent improvements with the Kariki Beta Sera Beta, MUOS is quickly approaching its first stable version for these devices, and development is still chugging along with Garlic OS 2.0. I will be releasing videos on the different custom firmware options in the coming weeks and months as they are released. However, I thought I would first make a video guide on how to update the stock firmware for people who want to wait a little longer for issues to get ironed out, or for those who do like the stock firmware. I will also showcase a community modded version that I would recommend over the official releases. In this video, I will cover where both of these versions can be downloaded, why you would want to choose one over the other, and how to install them. Okay, let's get on with it. Welcome back to FireX Techs. My name is Henry. The install process is relatively the same for all versions. So before I get into that, I'm going to go over the differences to help you choose which version is best for your setup and show you how to download and extract them. We will start by going over the official Ambernic firmware releases. You can get to their download page by clicking on the link in the description or just by searching Ambernic firmware download. You will then click the download button on the device that you own. Then on this page, they provide two links for the firmware. If you do end up choosing one of these, you will have to copy and paste the link into your browser's address bar as they are not hyperlinks. The first link has ROMs included with the download being around 35 gigs. And this one will set up your SD card just the way it was when you first received your device, but with the updated firmware. A few notes about this option. When you go to the download link, you do have to download all of these separate zip files. A quick way of getting that started is to highlight all of the files by clicking on the top one, holding shift, clicking on the bottom one, right clicking, and select standard download. Also, when all of these files are done downloading, you will need to make sure you select all of them and unzip them at the same time, as they are each pieces of a single image file. The second link is a trimmed down version without any ROMs. The download is roughly one gig, and this one is preferred by people who use a two SD card setup, storing their ROMs on the second SD card. The benefits of choosing either of these versions is that you get access to the updates as soon as they are released and don't have to wait for a modded version to be updated. And you also avoid any added bugs that might be introduced by modding. Not to say that these versions are bug free as they do have their issues. The negatives of using the official versions are that if you plan to use a single SD card setup, the SD card will be locked to the size of the firmware image you use and will not let you expand the image to fill up the storage on your card. So for example, if you had a 128 gigabyte card and installed the 64 gigabyte version with ROMs, your SD card is effectively shrunk down to a 64 gigabyte card with no way to use the other 64 gigabytes of free space. Not even with partition expanding software. Believe me, I tried. Now, if you plan to use a two SD card setup, this will not be as big of a deal for you as your ROMs will be stored on the second card, and the only downside for you will be missing out on some of the improvements made by the modded version, which I will go over now. The improved version I want to quickly go over is from a Reddit user by the name of Tom Dumel. I will have a link to his Reddit post and the direct download page in the video description. This is a modded version of the stock firmware and can be used with the Plus or H model. Some of the added features are the ability to use FTP to access your SD card wirelessly by simply typing in FTP colon slash slash then your IP address that shows in your device settings into your file explorer window on any computer that is on the same network. The username and password when prompted are both just the word game. This version will also automatically update your clock when you are using Wi-Fi. The game's partition on the SD card will be expanded, so if you are using a single SD card setup, you will be able to utilize the full space of your card. And then also over the air updates, 
for future releases and bug fixes of the modded version. There are some other features, but I will let you look over the Reddit page to see those in case you're interested. One of the downsides for using this version is the same for any modified version, new bugs could be introduced. You would also need to wait for the modded version to be updated after an official release comes out. However, Tom has been really good about being quick with the updates. The only bug that I'm aware of for the modded version is that when the Wi-Fi connects and updates the clock, it triggers the sleep mode timer and the screen will go black as it has gone to sleep. You can simply just hit the power button again to wake it up from sleep. There are a couple workarounds. You could either only use Wi-Fi when you need it to limit this happening or disable the sleep mode from the settings by setting lock to never. If you choose this version, make sure to download the newest release from the download link. As of the making of this video, it is version 3 shown here. Okay, that's it for going over the different versions. I hope you found some of that information useful to choose which version you'd like, and now we'll move on to the install. So for this next step, you will need to have already downloaded the version that you're going to use and make sure to extract it. If you do not already have something that can extract the 7-zip files, I will post a link in the description to the 7-zip website where you can download it for free as it is open source software. Now you will want to insert your SD card into your computer. I recommend using a brand name SD card as the ones that come with most devices are on the cheap side and are not as reliable. However, if you like to live dangerously, by all means, go for it. I just hate seeing Reddit posts about people losing their save data when the stock SD card fails. If you are using a single SD card setup, make sure to download your save games and states from your card to your computer. Also, if you're someone who does not have their own collection of ROMs and BIOS and are going to be using a version that does not come with ROMs like the modded one, you will also want to copy over the BIOS and ROMs folder to your computer. You should now have the image file for the version you chose, your SD card plugged in, and any files you don't want lost off of the card. To install the firmware onto the SD card, we will need to use a program that can flash an image file onto an SD card, like Rufus or Belina Etcher. I normally prefer Rufus as it's very simple. However, I will be using Belina Etcher for this video as it works for Windows, Mac, and Linux. I will have a link in the description where you can download it if you don't already have a tool that can do this. Once we're done installing Belina Etcher and have it launched, click the flash button from the file option, then navigate and select the image file we just extracted. Here, I'm gonna choose the modded version. Then click on select target and choose your SD card here. Triple check that you are selecting your SD card and not a system drive or another external drive that you may have plugged in. Then click flash. If you are using the version with ROMs, this can take a long time. Once this has finished, you will want to eject the SD card from your computer, place it in your device, and power it on. If this is the modded version, it will now expand your SD card partition to utilize the full space, so it may take a few moments. Once this is complete, you should be good to go. For single SD card users, you will need to reconnect your SD card to your computer, copy over your saves if you have any, or if you chose the modded version, you will need to copy over your ROMs and BIOS also. All right, that about wraps up everything I wanted to cover in this video. If you found it helpful, please give it a like, subscribe for more content from Firex Techs, and as always, thank you for watching.